Today, I'm going to go over glucose metabolism, but specifically glycolysis. So over here, we have just the general flow of glucose metabolism in its totality, glycolysis to perturbate oxidation to the Krebs cycle to the electron transport chain. And so from after glycolysis, everything requires oxygen. So everything in the whole wide world that's digesting glucose goes through glycolysis, but only if you're aerobic or you have air in your lungs, aka oxygen, will you be going through these other steps because these are all in the mitochondria, whereas glycolysis is in the cytosol, aka just the jelly stuff of the cell. So then you have this, and every product of each step is the reactant of the following step. So for example, glycolysis, the product is pyruvate, two of them, and so then in pyruvate oxidation, the product is acetyl-CoA. And then acetyl-CoA will go into the Krebs cycle, and the Krebs cycle will create all of these highly energetic molecules, which will then go into the electric transport chain, which then creates ATP, which is frankly required for the first step. So it's just a big old cycle. So when you look at this, we're gonna focus on glycolysis today because it seems like the most daunting information because there's so many steps and so many enzymes to memorize seemingly. But truly, if you just know either A, the enzymes, or B, the substrates, you know everything else because the enzymes are exactly named after what they do to the molecules. So if you know that it, this first step is glucose, to do glucose 6-phosphate, you know that someone put a phosphate on the glucose. So you know that it has to be a kinase because that's what kinase means. In this one, it's an isomerase, meaning that it just changes the structure. So it goes from a glucose to a fructose. That makes sense. This one, also a K, kinase, means that it, you're adding a phosphate. Perfect. And then this one, aldolase, is a fancy name for isomerase. So you're just changing the structure of that. And this one's a dehydrogenase. So you know it's a reduction reaction. This one, kinase again, but this time you're taking off a of phosphate, which means you're going from 3-phosphate to 2-phosphate, which you also know you're producing ATP in that step. And then the last couple steps, same flow. So you can easily deduce what the product is going to be or what the reactant is based on what the enzymes are. So that's just simple memorization. You can memorize it through a mnemonic or just by doing a flow like this. The biggest thing that you have to remember is steps one through five are energy consuming, where steps six through 10 are energy producing. So in that realm, that means that ATP is used within the first few steps, but then ATP is made within the last couple steps. The problem is, is that you make four ATP, but you use ATP, so you really only get two ATPs, which is fine though. So you don't get a lot of ATPs through substrate level phosphorylation, which is what this is called, but it's fine because if you are aerobic, you are then able to go and then go through probably the oxidation, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain to create more energy. And then the last thing that you just really need to focus on with glycolysis, one of the big highlights is the irreversible enzymes, which are gonna be step one, three, and 10. So step one, three, and 10, it can only go that way. And if you wanna go back up and make glucose from pyruvate, totally easy, it's called gluconeogenesis, but you'll just need different enzymes for these three steps. Okay, thank you so much. That's all I have for you about glycolysis. If you have any more questions about glycolysis, biochemistry, or anything, please go to www.clemson.edu ASC where you can find more videos or tutoring hours to help you. Thank you.